Howdy and welcome to week two of our weave and stitch along. And you see this display looks like a big uh, set of tools and which equals a lot of work, but um, I hope I will be able to turn this all into fun again. Um, but before we get started, I just would like to take a minute or two to um, make a very quick review of week one. Uh, honestly, I was overwhelmed by the participation um, and by the feedback that I received from people. There is, uh, it's just amazing and it's so much fun. Um, a lot of people picked up on week one uh, very quickly and turned out beautiful motives. And um, I have a little chart here. Um, I started a board on Pinterest. If you go to Texas Gabi, you will see the weave and stitch along board. And I'm trying to uh, collect all the motives that people, you know, squares and hexagons that people uh, embroider. Uh, and hopefully we can display there as many as possible. If I by accident miss somebody, please contact me. I want to make sure that I do post your pictures with permission. Um, so, um, but I'm, as I said before, I'm pretty much overwhelmed with how many people are uh, participating. So if I miss somebody, um, please let me know. Texas Gabi, either on Facebook or on Ravelry or email Gabi at texasgabi.com. Um, and let me know about it. By the way, these are also good ways to reach me if you have any, any, any questions about the weave and stitch along. Um, so there is a board on Pinterest. And then uh, I also have listed here Ravelry. Um, I'm a big fan of Ravelry because it allows me to uh, maintain and create a great portfolio of all the projects that I'm working on, whether they are weaving or embroidering or knitting or crocheting. And uh, it's fun and it make, makes it so easy to share with people. So I'm a very, very big fan of Ravelry projects. Uh, I would like to encourage you to start a project. If you need any help with that, um, there's good help online on Ravelry or just contact me. I'll walk you through it, no problem. Uh, but I would like to encourage you to start a project. Several people already have done that. And even if you just post your weekly pictures there, um, it's it's fun. It's, it's uh, while you are doing it and it's great down the road. Like you can in years co go back there and take a look at your projects and the pictures of that you did uh, way back then, which is right now. Also, Amber started a bundle of projects on Ravelry, which makes it even more easy to track projects. Um, so there is a weave and stitch along bundle. Uh, but even if you enter weave and stitch along in the search box, you will already see several uh, beautiful projects pop up right there. Last not least, uh, I am not a social media expert, um, but I started using hashtags. And for this weave and stitch along, I created the hashtag WS along. Um, you can see it down here. Uh, and you can use that on Instagram um, or on Twitter um, or you know wherever you can use hashtags. A hashtag is pretty much a little indicator or a word that makes it easier to find things. So if you are familiar with those hashtags, please start using WS along for our weave and stitch along. All right, um, lastly, just from the feedback from last week, um, lots of very positive and encouraging projects. I want to thank you for all of that. Uh, I would like to read to you one brief comment from Melissa. I wasn't sure the colors were going to work. It looked very different just holding the bonbon next to the yarn. I started smiling and doing a happy dance when I saw how it looked after the first two colors. To me that was right on with the objective of exploring 
in week one and um, I made a happy dance too on that one. Anyway, the title of this week is Getting Around. So you might think after getting ready, getting started, getting around, how many more gettings are coming. Um, I think this will probably be our last one, but there is a purpose to it. So let me just um, explain this a little bit. Getting around and also uh, where in week one we had um, the focus on exploring. I encourage you to explore. This week I would like to encourage you to follow instructions. And I can show you quickly what I mean by that. Um, here is uh, what we will be working on today. And you can see there are two different colors. What we will do is we will start in the center and then work with one color, one quarter, the other quarter, then start again in the center with another color and work a third quarter and then a fourth quarter. So you can already see how I'm sending you back and forth in different directions and everything. So um, this is where follow instructions is what I would like to encourage you to do this week. We will once again use the running stitch. So there's no really new stitch this week, but we will use that stitch in different directions. And so um, that's, that's the focus of this week. Um, practicing following instructions and going getting around on our uh, little looms um, is will come in very handy down the road when we add more stitches. So let's get started. Oh, here's actually one more thing that I would like to show you. Um, this is the this is another way of, of the of the motif that we will be working today, but it's worked on a different loom. And you can see this here. Uh, some of you uh, may know this here. It's a hazel rose loom, and this is a multi loom. Uh, hazel contacted me uh, shortly after we posted the um, getting ready video and said, hey, do you know the multi-looms? Multi and I was like, no, I have the Zoom loom and I have a few vintage looms, so I think I'm all set. I don't need any more looms. So no, I don't know the multi-loom. So, uh, well, she said, you should take a look at that because what you showed on the hexagon loom that you can slide it up to, to the nails to prevent that it sticks to the nails, you can actually do that on the multi-loom as well. I was like, okay, that's interesting, show me. So she sent me a loom and sure enough, um, the nails have heads, very tiny little heads. I'm not sure if you can see them here. And they are actually just enough to keep the woven square from sliding off. So another really nice way, if, if you care about this feature, uh, another very nice way to make a square, so you cannot just make hexagons, as I said before, you can make squares on the uh, multi-loom uh, and then use the, if you want, uh, use the, the bent needle to just work on the surface. Anyway, so thank you, Hazel, for pointing this out. And oh yeah, <laughs> actually, there's a funny thing, uh, following instructions, uh, to prove that I am human and not perfect. Um, when I was looking at this loom, I never thought about why this thing is called multi-loom. And then when I looked at this loom, so here's the starting point, uh, there were some extra nails on uh, one and on three. And I thought, wow, I got a lemon. And then I did take a look at the instructions booklet and it turned out that Hazel has made her looms or her multi-loom uh, exactly that way with those two extra nails bec because that allows you to uh, not just weave the regular way but also um, use diagonally so you have those four extra nails on, uh, on your loom and then she has, oh, here it is, uh, another way of weaving where you pull through the 
wefts with a crochet hook and lastly she mentioned you can just warp it and uh, also um, just weave it the regular way. So there are actually four different ways to uh, weave on this loom and uh, you can do that pretty much on other square looms as well but you know those two nails actually come in handy uh, to accommodate all those um, all those weaving, all those methods of weaving, and then just uh, flipping through her, I could not, I cannot resist. So this is a really cute picture here of baby Ellie uh, with a beautiful blanket. Again, instructions. If you actually follow instructions and read them, you see, or you discover a whole bunch of things. But this one, a lot of people often ask about crochet, uh, crocheting around squares. So. Uh, Hazel has brief descriptions, instructions in there for that. Um, anyway, I just wanted to point this out quickly. Oh yeah, and then if you ever want to make a little uh, party dress and you have Hazel's uh, multi-loom, I encourage you to look up the last page because there are instructions for a doll dress. Anyway, so um, just to prove, Hazel, that I did read your instructions, thank you very much for pointing out the usage of this loom and with that let's get started right away and let's make some space here last week i promised that this week i will start with the zoom loom so hexagon loom aside for now and we'll take the needle out for now and i will need my scissors um so let's take a look here these are the two the square and the hexagon that we're going to make this week. Here we go. Can we please zoom in? So, first of all, um, you saw already in, in the brief overview that I gave you that uh, we will start in the center of our loom. And for this, we will use two rubber bands. Um, just as a recap, we have here 31 strands times 31 strands in both directions. You can go and count them uh, because it's an odd number. There is no real absolute center. Um, but if you don't want to count and you want to use a quick method, I would like you to use rubber bands. If you put the rubber bands over diagonally like this, you can see that there is a little intersection right here. Let me see if I can hold this up to make it. You can see that there is an intersection where they intersect right here with a little opening and that's the center where we want to start. A very quick and easy way to find the center. You may be off one thread one way or the other, but it really doesn't matter because we have an odd number of, um, of threads to work with. All right, uh, for today we need two colors. I have chosen the cotton from my Lion Brand bonbons. And just for demonstration purpose, I have chosen two colors that are uh, contrasting. You can choose pretty much any color that you would like and any yarn that you would like. If it's a little bit thicker, uh, it comes out uh, nicer. I can show you again here. This is, whoops, let me show this one. Um, this was my very first sample that I made as proof of concept after designing um, after designing it and this one is done with uh, embroidery thread uh, if you choose a little thicker yarn or thread it will pop out even a little bit more so um, for today I have those two colors bonbons and this is the cotton version I will start with the red one and um, what I want you to do is you will need about 24 inches of yarn. 
So I have my ruler and this would be two times the length of my ruler and I clip it off here. So what we do next is find about half. So put those two ends together, hold them here and then find where it's about half. And this is where I want you to make this week's slip knot. Okay? So let me show you this. Not sure if we have enough. Yeah, we have it will fit. So here's our slip knot. 24 inches. Find the middle, and that's where you make your slip knot. And you will see later on why I do that. Um, take one end and thread it into the needle. Okay. And now we will find the middle. If you're not sure, or if this is hard to find the middle from here, you can actually see it's shined through a little bit. So you can just poke from, from here through. If you have difficulty seeing a hole, uh, feel free to poke the hole and make it just a little bit bigger for now. And that makes it easier to find. So do you see how we come through here, right through the center? And we pull it through. Just tug it enough so that the slip knot stops it on the back. You see that? So if you by accident pull it through, just start again, all right? So here we are coming out in the center. Perfect. So at this point, we will take off the rubber bands. We don't need them anymore. And you have to put the needles, you have to put the needle through the bands so that they don't get tangled. Here's number one, goodbye. And here's number two, pull the needle through and goodbye for now. All right, and so this is what it looks like right now. We have our loom and the thread comes out in the center. All right, and here come the instructions. First, we want to travel with our running stitch to the left. Two threads to the left and go down. Keep on running, two threads to the left and go up. Keep on running, two threads left and down. Two threads to the left and up. And one more, two threads to the left and down. Okay, just a quick check with our completed one. You can see now, let me see if I can show you this. Maybe this is the row that we just finished. So from the center, we went to the left, okay? So now we go up two. Go two up and come out. See where we're coming out? All right. Now go to the left. Two to the left and down. Two to the left and up. Two to the left and down. Two to the left and up. Two to the left and down. All right, quick check. This is the second row right here of our sample. Guess what? where we are going next? Yes, we are going up. So go two up and come up. Two to the left. I think you get the idea, don't you? And down. 
two to the left and up two to the left and down all right now here comes the trick this is a big travel now we go two up and you can see here I'll just wiggle the needle that you see two up and four over one two three four so if you're a little bit confused where to come out just look where the needle comes out okay so two up and four over this is where I want you to come out can you see that all right and two to the right and down take a look so we have two rows with three running stitches here and then one row with two and one row with just one running stitch and you can already see how the shape forms of the final one okay so now we are going getting ready to make those three diagonal stitches right here all right very easy and still just running stitches I want you to go two up and come up okay here we go can you see that so two up and come up now instead of going straight we're going diagonal which will bring us to the point of the previous stitch so I want you to you can count if you want to count you count two over and two down that will bring you here to this point of the previous stitch and if you now go down here's your first diagonal stitch okay to keep it simple for now go two to the left and come up to keep it simple now we go two to the left and come up okay do you see here where the needle comes out it's just two to the left so there's no magic on the back okay and just come up now we do the same thing that we did before two over and two down which brings us to the previous stitch and we make a diagonal take a look here's your second diagonal okay we do that one more time two to the left and come up and then you stitch the diagonal on the top two over and two down to bring it to the point of the previous stitch okay so at this point all you need to do is release the thread okay so now we have to go dig on the back a little bit to get that long end out and that got very tangled but we'll just untangle that from the stitches I have to put this down to get it out okay actually let me put this right here so that you can see what's happening um, when you work you might want to check after a stitch but particularly in the beginning to make sure that it doesn't get tangled but if it gets tangled just untangle it at this point right here and right there so here we go and the next thing that we will be doing is um, opening up the the slip knot because now we're going to work with the other end okay so open up the slip knot and then thread your needle and you can see now here we go uh, so this is the first quarter that we have completed and you can see if I hold this up the next part that we will be working is this second quarter down here all right and you might want to guess at this point where this is going yes we are going just the other direction so if you wiggle the thread you can see that it came out in the center so now we are going away from the center to the left or actually first we go one down two down so go two down and come up that's your first stitch and it looks like this can you see this 
So two down and come up. That's the first stitch. And I'm doing this relatively quickly now uh, with instructions. You can just follow along if you need to pause. Just go ahead and hit the pause button. But uh, we're going, so basically we're just mirroring this quarter right here. So we're going two to the right and go down. Two to the right and come up. Two to the right and go down. Two to the right and come up. And one more going down in this direction. Two to the right going down. And now we go two down and come up to start the second row. And then we go into the other direction, two to the left and down, two to the left and up, two to the left and down, two to the left and up, two to the left and down. And the second row is completed. We go two down and come up, two to the right and go down, two to the right and come up, two to the right and go down. And here's this row completed. And here's where the tricky one comes. So you go two down and then one, two, three, four, over, okay, to come up. And you can see, now it's, it's actually not that difficult because you can help use this, this vertical here as help to find where you have to come out. Go over to the left for two and go down. All right, let's start our diagonal stitches. Go down for two and come up. And just one more time. So you can go over one, two, and up to hit the same stitch right here. You see where the needle is? That's where we're going down. Go two to the right and come up. Two over, two up and go down. Two to the right, come up, two over and two up and go down. Here we go. Release the needle. All right. And now here's one thing that with with following instructions or directions, um, a lot of people that do embroidery very seriously, they care that the top looks good, of course, but that the bottom looks good too. And so this week's challenge here with announced is that once you're done and you turn it over, it still looks good. So it should look something like this. And you see that the straight that the running stitch stitches are all straight. When you go up and down, you have this one row here, and there's this one big stitch that crosses over on both sides. But that's what I want it to look like on the wrong side. Okay? So this will be this week's extra challenge. You can post a picture of your wrong side when you're done or not. That's completely up to you. I would like to encourage you to follow instructions and see if you can get it that way. Okay? So, all right. The red color is completed. Choose your second color at this point. And you already get, you know, one of my kids said, oh, mama, that looks like an hourglass. And so if we have both of them, that's kind of a double hourglass. Well, yeah, okay. I thought initially it looks a little bit, the, the motive, the design reminds me a little bit of uh, the nautical alphabet. Of course, this doesn't mean anything, but it looks a little bit like it. Um, some other family members thought it looks like a fluffy wasp nest. So um, when it comes to naming designs, 
take your pick. Let's quickly go to the second color. And I think at this point you can already guess where this is going. Um, so we will just make the same stitches but in different directions. Let's measure one time, two times, 24 inches of the alternate color. Oh. Put both ends together. Find the center, the middle, and that's where you make your slip, slip knot. <coughs> Excuse me. And let's thread the needle. And this time you don't need the rubber bands because you already know where the center is. So just come out at the same st center stitch where you started. Can you see that here? That's where we will start the the alternate alternate color as well. If you now turn it around, you can see here the slip knot again uh, stops it right there in the center. Um, you have a few more threads now hanging around, but if you work carefully, um, that should not be a problem. And so now um, I will give you quick instructions here. Uh, there's nothing new to it. I would like to encourage you to hold your loom really. Um, let me just hold, I turned around. Hold your loom uh, in the same direction because it's a good practice to with your with your working hand uh, to work in different directions and come out on the right. You know when you particularly when you poke up and you have to find the right location. It's a good practice to find your way around to getting around. So, um, oops, I pulled through the slip knot. So let's let's see if we can do that. It's not just to achieve the goal of have it completing this, but also how you get there. Okay? So here we are in the center and we want to work this quarter first. So we have to go to the left. Two to the left and down. I got tangled. If something like that happens, just feel free to turn around and fix it. So here we go. I pulled by accident on the slip knot. That's fixed. And here we go. Two to the left and up. Two to the left and down. Two to the left and up two to the left and down. And this completes the first row in this quarter. We now go down two and come up. You see this here? That's the needle. Down two and up. And now we go the other direction. So two to the right and down. Two to the right and down, up two to the right and down, two to the right and up. And now you poke down in the same location where the red stitch is. That's where they meet and go down. You see that? Okay. Now we go two down and come up two to the left, go down, two to the left, come up, two to the left, go down, and here comes the big stitch, so go two down and four over, one, two, three, four, and come up and make one more stitch, and go down. What's left on this quarter is to make the diagonals. And you don't need to count. You can just poke out where the red diagonal starts. I'm not sure if you can see this. Here's the needle. So just come out where the red one comes out is. Or count two down. Both ways are valid. And then you go two to the left and back to the black stitch to go down to make your first diagonal here, you see? That's actually pretty how they meet. Go two to the left to come out, 
and make your diagonal stitch two to the left and make your diagonal stitch all right here's what it looks like on the wrong side just release your needle at this point okay there we go and time to release the slip knot and thread the needle on the other half of the thread and you know this this exercise with the with the with the thread and you know make the slip knot in the center and things like that that's all gobby stuff that's not any official uh, embroidery recommendation I just think it works quite well for what we're doing here. All right, let's turn around and we're working on the last quarter up here. Again, you come out here in the center, in the center stitch. There's now a red and a black one. So that's where we come out with the needle. Here we go. Oh, no, sorry, that was my wrong. Um, we actually don't come out in the center. We go two up from the center, okay? So one, two, up from the center. That's where we come out. Yep, that looks better. Here we go. And two to the right and down. Two to the right and up. Two to the right and down. And you know, at this point, we should probably just mute the audio so that you can say your own directions because that's the fourth time that you're hearing me say them and you probably know the game by now so here's the first row completed we are going up to come up to work the second row two to the left and down two to the left and up two to the left and down, two to the left and up. The last one on the second row, two to the left and down, and that's again uh, meets a red one of the red threads. Go two up, two to the right and down, Two to the right and up. Two to the right and down. And here comes the big stitch, the big step. So two up and four over. One, two, three, four. That's where we come up. And then we go two over to meet one of the red stitches. Go two up to start the diagonal. That's the tip of our design. And go two over and two down, which is meeting the right stitch. And here is your first diagonal of the last side. Two to the right and come up. Diagonal stitch, two to the right and two down two to the right and two to the right and go down and you know these instructions you can use them for your own design or other designs so um, for example if you want to go one direction just go two straight if you want to turn anything into a diagonal go two straight and either up or down to make the diagonal uh, later on you'll probably Notice that it's also easy to to count the crosses that your brain starts to do the up and over automatically. But for now, if you want to make a diagonal, go up and over or up and down or something like that to make a diagonal stitch. Okay, so all we need to do here is. So all that's left to do here is release your thread from the needle. And then let's turn it around. This is what it looks like now. And we'll pull out some of the ones. And you see here there's a red and a black one to the left, and there's a red and a black one 
to the right. And this is where you can use the Gabi method of double knotting uh, to finish. So this is like take two and make two knots on this side. Take two. And make two knots on this side. Okay. And you can clip it off. You may absolutely use those threads now to, to weave in the ends if you care. Um, but right now for, for our project, I think it's sufficient to do it this method. So this is what it looks now. And uh, on the wrong side, and this is what it looks on the right side. Okay, so now all you need to do is just slide it off. Here we go. Okay, very carefully slide it off, and here's your square. All right, let's take a look. That looks pretty, doesn't it? I hope you're enjoying this. And now let's do. Let's put this aside and we'll do the same on the hexagon loom. So here we go. So welcome back to week two. And we're now making our little nautical alphabet or fluffy wasp nest or design on, on the hexagon loom. All right. So what we will be doing here again is we will start in the center right here and then work in quarters. So we will finish this one first and then work on this one and then we will switch colors and work this one and this one. All right, let's get started. First, to find the center, you can count the threads uh, over here and over here and find somewhere here in the middle, of course, is the center. You will not find the perfect center hole because we have an uh, odd number of threads. Um, so you have to decide if you want to go up and, and sideways anyway. But instead of counting, the very quick and easy method is if you put a rubber band or two diagonally over the black nails. Okay, use the black nails and just put two rubber bands like this. Um, and you can see it here. Let me see if I can show this a little bit better. There is, see where they, oh, where they intersect? That's the perfect center. Let me see if I can wiggle with the needle through here. So this is the perfect center of your hexagon right here. All right. So, um, Let's pick our first color. I have the red cotton here and you will need 24 inches. So twice a ruler or 24 inches. And we can clip it off. And we first we want to do find the middle of this new string. So hold the two ends together like this and then find the middle right here and that's where we will make this week's slip knot okay so just make your little slip knot right there and it should fit yeah it does fit here so you can see this is our 24 inches of embroidery yarn or floss we folded it in half to find the middle and that's where we made our slip knot for this week and then you just pick any end and thread it into your needle. There we go. All right. So now we want to come out here in the center. Um, you can actually, when you turn it around and have a good background, you can actually easily see where it is. So you can just poke in here from, uh, poke in here looking through, or you can poke the hole from the top and make it a little bit bigger so that you can find it more easily you can see it now maybe here so there's a bigger hole and that's where we want to come out right here you see that 
So anyway, come out through the center. Okay, that's where we want to get started, like this. All right, and then we put our loom down because at this point we take off the rubber bands. We don't need them anymore because we found the center. And you have to put the thread through the rubber bands. Goodbye, rubber bands. One and two. All right, and here is now our centered thread or yarn on our hexagon loom. And what we will do first is we want to travel with our running stitches to the left, okay? And so just follow instructions, or in this case for the running stitch directions. Go two to the left and go down. All right, so this will make your first stitch, and here we go. Travel to the left, go two to the left, and come up. Keep on traveling to the left. Two over and down. One more time. Two to the left and come up. Two to the left and go down. All right. This completes your first row, and we can compare that with the sample right here. So this is the first row that we made from the center out to the left. Okay. Next, we want to for the second row, we want to go up, and then we turn travel to the right. So go up to right here you see where I come out just up to and then travel to the right two over to the right and go down I think you get the idea here all right two over to the right and come up two to the right and go down two to the right and come up, two to the right and go down. All right, so this is the second row and you see now here, here's the center. We come up a little bit up from the center but we are traveling towards that white nail up there. See, this is what the back looks like right now. So we have two rows on the right and there's our slip knot. So from here, the next step is to get to the third row. Yep, you're guessing right. We're going two up to come up. All right. We travel to the left again. Two left, go down. Two left, come up. Two left, go down. All right, and here is probably the only tricky thing in this whole design. Uh, we have to travel quite far. We need to go two up. You can see the needle here, hopefully. And we go four to the right. One, two, three, four. And that's where we want to come up, okay? See where the, nail, where, the, where the thread is? So this is like we will continue building up on this bar here just for one stitch. And I'll show you quickly on the back side. So there's a relatively large stitch that travels here over to the stitch that we are going to work now. Okay? So this is two up and four over where we come up. And then we travel to the right for two and go down. All right, and you can see here now, if we compare this with our little sample, there are these three, four rows actually by now, and we are up here. So now we are going to work those diagonal stitches. Let me just put this over here. You see those diagonal stitches? That's what we're going to work next. They are still kind of running stitches, uh, but we just poke in through different holes. So. Uh, let me show you how to do this. From your current position, the needle is at the, on, on the down, at the bottom, 
travel two up. Okay, so it's almost like you want to start a next row. So this is where we come out, two up. And now we count two to the left and two down. Let's show that again. Two to the left and two down, which happens to hit where the previous stitch is also. And we go in through that same hole. Okay, and that makes our first diagonal stitch. Can you see that? Okay, now to keep it simple, we just travel two to the left to come up again. So two to the left and come up. And now we work the next diagonal stitch, which is two over and two down. And here's our next diagonal stitch. To prepare for the last stitch, travel two to the left to come up. And then it's two over and two down. And here we go. All right. At this point, you may release the needle. And let's just take a quick look at the back. This is what it looks like right now. Okay. So, and at this point, we will release the slip knot and work the other half of our of our thread or yarn in the other opposite direction. Okay. So thread your needle. And here we go. So uh, next we want to work the quarter down here. So from our current position, which is the second thread just right here, and that's in the center, we will travel two down to come up. So two down and come up. And now to get the design here, we will travel to the right, okay? So two to the right and down. It reminds me I have not slid this up here. Let me just do this quickly so that the yarn won't snatch so much. There we go. Okay. Two to the right. To come up, two to the right to go down. Well, that's just one. Okay, let's fix that. Can't count to two. Here we go. Two to the right and go down. Two to the right and come up. Two to the right, and go down. You can see now that we're relatively close here to the nails, and this is the different number of threads that makes us do that, uh, from the square to the to the hexagon. All the designs in this weave and stitch along are designed in a way that they will fit both loops, the hexagon loom and the uh, square looms, no matter, you know, um, what brand or what have you. Anyway, so here we go. This is the first row on the right side. And you can already see what we're going to do is we will mirror the designs here. See that? So uh, let's work on row two. We come up. We go, go down two to come up. And now we travel to the left. And from here, I'll do this a little bit more quickly. If you need help or want to see even each individual uh, stitch, you can just pause until and, and work along with it. But this is like uh, we're taking two to the left and either coming up like we do now or going down. going up and here's our second row all right and yes you're guessing right if you think that we have to go two down at this point to start the third row absolutely so two down and two over to go down two to the right 
and go up. And in this row, yes, because we are mirroring it, we just need two stitches. So this completes our third row with two stitches. Okay, and here again comes the big stitch, the big stretch. So we go two down, let's probably see here where the needle is, and then we count four to the left. One, two, three, four. As a check, you can see that we're working on the same column here, the first column. And so just make sure that you come out in the same um, thread area here. Two to the left and over to go down. Okay. Now we start the diagonal stitches. Go two down and come up. And now you count two over to the right and two up to go down. And here's your first diagonal stitch at the bottom. Two to the right. And the next diagonal stitch, two to the right and two up. And here we are already at the last stitch. Two to the right. Oh, sorry. And coming up. And then two to the right and two up to make the last diagonal stitch. Here we go. All right. And this completes our red yarn. And um, here's our hourglass again. And so now we use the, uh, uh, the, the, the other color, the contrast color, to make another hourglass right here. All right, so same thing. Let's measure 24 inches. One, two. Hold the two ends together to find the middle right here. And that's where we make our slip knot. Thread one end into your needle. And now we come up in the center again. Okay, so we, now we don't need the rubber bands anymore because we already know where the center is right there. So we can just poke through the center to come up. Careful that your slip knot doesn't slip through but stops you where you need to stop. And guess what? Yes, we are now working just the opposite direction for everything. Okay, so um, I'm working this quarter area first and it doesn't really matter whether you work this one first or this one first uh, I think I did the other way around on the other one but anyway so here we're working this area so we're going two to the right and go down two to the right come up Two to the right, go down. Two to the right, come up. Two to the right and go down. So here's our first row with a contrasting color. And you know, here we work to the left, there we work to the right with our running stitches. From here, we go two up to come out. Two, and now we go to the left. Two to the left, go down. Two to the left, come up. Two to the left, go down. Two to the left, come up. 
And now we meet the red stitch right here. So when we go two to the left, we use the same hole as the red stitch to go down. All right, and this completes our second row. The third row, to make the third row, we go two stitches up or two rows up to come up. And now we just need to make two stitches to the right. So we travel two right and down, two to the right to come up, two to the right to come down. And here comes the big stitch. Remember how it goes? Yes, we're counting two up and four over. One, two, three, four. Again, this bar of black stitches might already help you to find the hole if you want to take a shortcut. We come up and finish the last straight stitch right here. All right, and now we will work the diagonals. Count up two to come up, which happens to be the same as the, the, the red diagonal stitch, so they have the same origin. And now, yes, you count two over and two down to make your first diagonal stitch up here. Go two to the right and come up. Two to the right and two down to make your next diagonal stitch. Two to the right. And two to the right and two down. For the last diagonal stitch. Hope you can see this. All right. Okay. Now I think the contrast makes it clear enough. So this completes our first black half over here. We now turn it around and go fish for the black thread. Here we go. And release the slip knot. Put this down. There we go. And then we can thread the needle. And actually, I think you got the hang of it by now. And it should go relatively quickly um, to complete the last, the last area down here. And I would like to encourage you to hold the loom actually in this position. Um, you know, in this weave along, it's not about how quick you can um, complete a project. But also there's, at least I try to add some, some uh, learning benefits to it. So if you hold your loom in uh, always in the same way, you actually really practice moving your needle in different directions and, you know, finding particularly when, when you come from the bottom, it will take some time to get used to, okay, where do I actually come up? So, and it's a, it's a really good practice that you will benefit, not for the, just the running stitch, but, um, you know, for many other embroidery stitches as well. So anyway, um, let's get to work here. Um, from the current point, which is the center, comes out in the center right here, wiggle, wiggle, um, we go two down to come up. Okay, so go two down to come up. And you see you come out here where the, where the red row already starts and you just continue running in, in that direction from the red row. So um, by now I think you know the drill, two over and go down. And let's run two to the left, come up, two to the left, go down. Two to the left, come up, two to the left, and go down. There we go. Go two down to come up to start the next row. Two to the right, go down. Two to the right, 
to come up. 2 to the right. To go down. 2 to the right. Come up. And this is where we meet another red stitch. 2 to the right and go down. Share the same hole as the red stitch. Okay. Go down to come up. Again, this is a shared hole with another red stitch. Let me just move this in a tiny little bit. Makes it easier to work. Okay. And we're going two to the left. And go down. Two to the right. Uh, to the left, sorry. Come up. Two to the left. Go down. Here's the last very big stitch. We go two down and four to the right. One, two, three, four. Okay. And then two to the right to go down. And all that's left now is to work those diagonal stitches over here on the side. All right. So we go two down to come up. Oh, not away. And now we go the we do the diagonal stitch, two to the left and two up to meet the black stitch up there. Here's your first diagonal stitch. Go two to the left to come up. Two to the left and two up to go down. Two to the left to come up. Two to the left to go down. There we go. All you need to do is release your needle. All right, and here's your design. You can see it right here. And next we just need to, oh yeah, let's take a look at the left. Oh, we do this after we take it off. So this is the time when we take it off. not from the weaving and oh this is actually one thing I would like to quickly show you um, on the hexagon you just need to take off one side and then you the others come up very easily a lot of people are concerned about the nails but they are not really getting in the way um, so just use a needle or something sharp to get one side off and then the others pop up very easily so uh, another thing is that you can do two at a time, not sure if this shows here, but instead of fishing each individual loop, what I do is I poke in here between two nails, can you see this, and then just lift it off like this, can you see that? So again, between two nails and lift them up at the same time. Two nails and pop it off like this. Okay, and then once you get here to one of the black nails, you can just lift it off like this very easily. The other sides. No magic to it. Just a little trick. All right, here we go. And here is our hexagon. Just wiggle wiggle all right what we still need to do is we need to take care of the wrong side of it so let's turn it over it looks a little bit messy doesn't it no problem just pull out those threads until you have a red and a black thread on each side like this see that you turn it around um, this is the red thread and here's the black thread on the other side okay and so if you want, you can weave in those ends. There's enough going on here on the back where you can weave in the ends. But I still want to use my Gabi method at this point, which is take two and make a knot. All right, so one. Make a knot, two. On the other side as well, take two, make 
and make two. Make two knots. There we go. Clip those ends. And again, if you want, you can put a little dot of uh, uh, super glue on it. But other than that, that's that's um, that's it. That's all there is to it. Um, just want to show you one thing. Um, this is the side that we worked on with the design. Okay, but the challenge of this week is the best proof of following directions is if um, both sides look good. So here you have the right side with the design, but the wrong side is still decent looking. So all those running stitches go in one direction, then you have this ridge here, and you have those four big stitches where we have the big stretches right here. Okay, so um, I would like to challenge you, you don't have to, but I would like to challenge you this week to post a picture of the completed design and of the back of it. A lot of people that care a lot about embroidery, um, they care about that it looks good on the wrong side as much as it looks on the right side. Okay, so anyway, here we go. Week two of our weave and stitch along comes to an end with two beautiful motifs as a collection for our upcoming table runner. So, just to recap, what we did today is we found our way around on our looms and we started in the center let's see if I can put this a little bit prettier yeah okay so this was starting in the center which is not just good for today but we will pick up on that in, in other weeks and it's a good way to very quickly find the center of, of, uh, of when you want to do other embroidery on, on, on your loom. Uh, so finding the center, starting on the center, and then finding our way around. We're not just going straight and up and down, but also exploring how to make some stitches in the diagonal. All right, I hope you had fun, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing your pictures of week two and I'm also looking forward to week three of our stitch along. Thank you very much for listening. Happy embroidering, happy weaving and I hope I'll see you next week.